Hello and welcome to the 14th unit of the Qt tutorial from tutorialcoding.com. In this unit I will introduce the QLineEdit classes signals. The cursor position changed signal is emitted anytime the user enters a text or moves around the line edit with the keyboard or the mouse. It carries around two arguments, the old and the new cursor position, and these start counting at zero. Both editing finished and return pressed are emitted when the enter key is hit. And additionally, the editing finished signal is emitted when the line edit loses focus. For example, when I drag around this, uh, the window or when I click another widget in the window. The selection changed signal is emitted when a text is selected or a selection is removed. It's also triggered when the widget, the line edit is cleared. And the text changed and text edited signals are emitted when the user changes the text either by entering a new text by cutting a text out or pasting it from the system clipboard. And the difference between these two signals is that the text change signal is additionally also called when the value is changed programmatically. For example, when I hit the clear button, it is changed by the clear slot. And this only triggered the text changed signal and not the text edited signal. These two signals carry the new text value of the line edit when they are called. Application components. The application has a queue line edit, which is unmodified. It has a button that is connected to the clear slot of the queue line edit. And it has a signal monitor containing six signal indicators. The three signals that carry no arguments are instances of the signal indicator class, which derives from the checkbox. And when it is enabled, they are highlighted. When these are enabled, they are highlighted when a signal is triggered. The other three signals carry along arguments like a text argument for text changed and text edited, and two integers for the position changed signal. So these are instances of classes that, in, that inherit signal in, uh, indicator and they handle the arguments by inserting them into the label replacing a wildcard or two. On the code side, the application consists of a line edit label on the left side, a line edit here and the clear button that is connected to the line at its clear slot. And then it continues with the group box and it sets up the indicators and the layout. The signal indicator class derives from Q checkbox. It has a timer which is used to 
reset the style of the label once after a short timeout and it has a signal triggered virtual slot that highlights the label and starts the timer. So in the implementation it checks if the signal indicator is enabled and if it's enabled it changes the font to bold and red then starts the timer which is in, uh, created in the constructor for it's a single shot timer with a 1.5 second timeout and the timeout is connected to the reset label slot that removes the bold and red color from the label So the main window starts creating the signal indicators and the three signal indicators that are connected to the signals that carry no arguments are simple. They simply create a new instance of the base class, set the text of the label to match the signature of the signal and then connect the line edit signal that matches the label to the signal indicator signal triggered class uh, signal triggered method signal triggered slot that highlights the label and triggers the timer to reset the label now instead of setting the text the other indicators use a pattern and this pattern has one or two white cards. So when I look into the signal indicator class it has a pattern variable and a set pattern method and this method it simply stores the pattern before applying it to the label. So if the application, when the application starts up, it still carries these wildcard characters before the first signal is triggered. And then it's connected to the signal triggered, which is overridden in these classes. So signal indicator text overrides the signal triggered slot with the text argument in that is that matches the signals text argument and in the implementation it reads the original pattern replaces the wildcard with the text from the signal sets the text on the label and calls the parent classes signal triggered slot to start the, to highlight the label and start the timer. Same goes for the signal indicator position changed class, but this takes integer values from the signal, so it converts them to strings before it replaces the wildcards, and then it also sets the text and starts the parent class's signal triggered method. And finally, the main window creates all the layouts and puts them together so to look good. So, so thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it insightful. If you are not using the embedded player on the tutorial coding site, you might want to visit the upper annotation here. The tutorial coding site contains the source code for this unit and a further description. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Google Plus or Twitter. Thanks for your attention. Have a nice day. Bye.